I, I wish I could find a statistic on how much time is actually wasted in meetings. I work with some, some elite level companies now and I'm shocked at how much dysfunction they have, that, that, that they don't necessarily have clear roles on their team and that their meetings are chaos. And that's a lot of stuff I just took for granted being around, you know, uh, coaches that really understood, you know, how to create a, a winning type culture. So I'm, I'm thankful for an opportunity to be able to share these kind of nuggets with, with those groups. There's just too many meetings in general. I mean, some people hold meetings to plan the next meeting. And it's like, there has to be something more efficient that we could be doing. And, and you know, I pull a page out of my basketball uh, playbook. You know, a, a coach at the beginning of a game is only given a finite number of timeouts. And those timeouts are brief by design. They're either 30 or 90 seconds. So uh, they don't have the luxury of calling a timeout whenever they want or holding a meeting with the team whenever they feel like it. You only get a few of them, so you have to use them wisely. And you have to be brief by design because that's how long the timeouts are and you best share something with your team that's going to put them back out on the court you know uh, more apt to succeed and I think businesses should follow a similar model like hey don't pretend we can have meetings whenever we want I mean imagine if I if I came into light speed and said you get three meetings this week or three meetings this month that's all you get Brad so you better figure out how and when you want to use those oh and by the way when you have them there's a 20 minute time limit on each and not only is there a 20 minute time limit, there needs to be an invite list and the only people that are in the meetings are those that need to be there. We don't need this big corral of people and half the people are sitting in the meeting going, why am I here? Someone could give me a PDF with the bullet points from this meeting. This is, this is a colossal waste of my time. The agenda of the meeting, what's the purpose of this meeting and who needs to have direct input? You know, so if you and I were going to have a meeting about how to create killermeeting.com, then who else besides you and I would need to be a part of this meeting? Who else would, would be able to add input to this? And if we decide that it's just you and me, then it's just going to be you and me meeting. We don't need to have anybody else in the room, but so many groups would have 20 people in this room, even though you and I are the only ones that need to actually have any input, and that's wasting 18 other people's time. You should never hold a meeting if there's not a distinct purpose for holding the meeting. If you can't you know, say, at least in a, in a clear sentence or a couple of bullet points, the reason that you're having the meeting and what is the outcome that you're looking for. What do I want these people to be able to do differently when they leave this meeting? If you can't answer that, then you probably shouldn't have the meeting in the first place. So there needs to be something that they completely understand. This is the reason. Here's why we're going to the meeting. This is what Brad wants us to do. Here's why I'm actually invited to the meeting, whether it's for me to hear something or for me to share something. But I know crystal clear why I'm there. And here's an agenda. That, and, and I know if we have an agenda and Brad sticks to it, he's unconsciously telling me that he respects my time. Because if he doesn't, if you just bring people in and everybody's talking and it's a free-for-all, then no one's being respectful of anybody else's time. Yeah. So now I'm coming into the meeting. I know exactly what we're going to talk about. I know the reason we're having it. And I know what I'm going to need to be able to do differently when I leave this meeting. And sometimes that'll take eight minutes. Sometimes it might take 90. But at least we know that every minute has been invested into something that's trying to get us where we're trying to go. And that's, that's where I see a lot of folks, they're not doing that. One of the worst answers I think anyone can ever give to any question is, well, that's the way it's always been done. And, and I, I think that I hear that a lot. Bob. I hear that a lot as well. That's one of the reasons I enjoy going into the corporate world, even though I don't have a lick of corporate experience. I use that as to my advantage because I go into a company and say, I'm not going to tell you the way things have always been done. I'm going to come in with a fresh perspective and shake things up and do things differently. Yeah. You know, but I think that people think, well, you know, when I was the VP here, we always held meetings and this is what we did. We have the month, you know, the, the Monday morning staff meeting is just the way we do things here. And no one's taken a second to step back and go, do we even need this Monday morning meeting? What's the point of it? Just because we've been doing it for five years doesn't mean it's of value. And I think that's why a lot of people do a lot of things in their lives. It's the way it's always been done and they don't take time to question it.